Oh, greetings. This is Lakesh. Yay, Lakesh. Nice to hear you. It is so nice to be here. Hello, Max. Hello. Uh, so the question is frozen during your conversation. So I did not hear it. Again, uh, so um, I would like to get uh, an overview of Pleiadian uh, stars and cultures. Like which culture is known for what? Basically, just to, to understand who is who. But also, if you have a uh, novel news, origin news, or anything, any messages before that, uh, the, you're welcome to pronounce them as well. Ah, well, it will take some time to go through that history. But okay. I will attempt to, I will start with my planets. Uh huh. X1, X2, and X3, they're very large planets in a binary star system in the Pleiades. And, um, because they are large planets, actually, it's funny because they go in size. The closer one to the sun, the binary suns are the largest. Then it gets a little smaller, then it gets a little smaller. But there is a huge population on all of them. And we are very happy to uh, be who we are. We are counselors to the universe. And we do not do any alliances with any species. Now, mm -hmm. in order to tell you about our cultures, there are different cultures, just on as on your world, but my culture is one of great tradition and lineage. The culture that I celebrate uh, celebrates the your life and the lives of those have gone that have gone before you in many senses, so that there you collect the past, you collect things from your ancestors and you pass them on to the new generations. Let me tell you how it works. First of all, we do celebrate birthdays like you do, but there are other situations, uh, deaths and births uh, and uh, other things that we celebrate. And when we do celebrate these things, we put on our ritual clothing. And with that ritual clothing is all the jewelry that has come from the past. Jewelry and, uh, and the things that made uh, our ancestors who they were, determined their uh, information. You learn the stories about each piece of the uh, jewelry, about each scarf or each piece of clothing that you are wearing and you go and you mingle with others that are dressed appropriately and similarly and as you are mingling someone will ask you about a piece of your jewelry or clothing that they really like and you give them the story behind that piece of jewelry or clothing and then you give it to them and tell them to pass that story along. Now, sometimes we do what you call recording the story so that they do not get it mixed up with other stories that they are going to be telling. So they have um, the ability to learn that story. And it's part of our nature, part of our culture that you must remember that short little story about that piece of jewelry or whatever. So if someone asks about it, you tell what that relative's name was, who it was in your ancestry, and you give them that jewelry. Now that piece of jewelry that you are looking at, that they picked, may not be from your ancestry. It may be from someone else's. And so that still is important because you are creating a history for those that existed before and you are bringing it to life in that now, in that moment. Thank you very much. Um, I already know a bit about your culture. We did several interviews about your culture. Can you tell me about Mayan culture? Mayan culture is different. They depend on the kings and queens for their ruling and uh, for the way they live. 
there are four kingdoms. The th first three are above the planet. They, they're not on the planet. They are above the planet on, uh, on different anti-gravitational platforms so that they can see into the universe and warn the people of attacks or of what is coming from the universe. The fourth one is on their moon. Uh, they have two moons. Their fourth uh, kingdom is the kingdom of the moons, which is also above the moon's surface. But that kingdom rules over those two moons, which have a less population, but yet it are still looking out for the planet and the people on their areas. Now, that is the kingdom, the kingdom portion. The people on the planet are just like your uh, planet in some ways. They listen and take a heed of what their leaders say. And they are very much anti-war. They're very much anti-violence. Uh, and but just within the last year, they did have two murders, which is something that hasn't happened in a great deal of time. I'm not sure exactly. I think it was like within the last hundred years, they had no murders. And then two existed in the third kingdom. Um, and that cre created a great uh, global uh, fear among the people because if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. So uh, they did catch the culprits, but the people are still shaken up about that. And they have the kinds of jobs that you would have on your planet, taking care of uh, dis uh, distributing things, taking care of bringing minerals out of the ground, things of that nature. So the peoples are um, mostly, what you would call blue collar workers, but there are many white collar workers as well. So that is what the kingdom of Maya is like. Plus the kingdoms uh, deal with a lot of universal trade and universal counseling, uh, trade agreements, etc. cetera. Um, the kings and queens thereof will uh, hear many different uh, things, and that is where also the Jondi Council is. The Jondi Council is a great magical council because they have a great deal of power in the universe, and they are uh, part of the ruling class or ruling functionality of the first kingdom. They are the final word when it comes to the kingdoms of Maya. They, they are only asked to come in if they, and make a final decision if one cannot be made by the kings or queens or whatever. But they are asked to give counsel many times. So uh, it is that they go through the universe and uh, create great healing and uh, great things that can happen. You've heard of the Jedi Knights on your uh -huh. That comes from Jondai. That wow. is the Jondai Council. They are very similar to Jedi Knights. Jondai, right. Jedi. So you okay. get that. You see, they some of the information that comes down to your theaters and your fiction comes from truth in the universe that has been passed down from aliens to humans. So therefore the Jondi council is actually uh, where they got the name Jedi. So the, the bad guy in Star Wars, which has a, weird, uh, which has a bad breathing problem. Uh, yes. Who is um, he? You mean, uh, I think his name is Darth Vader. Um, oh, right, yeah. Uh -huh. There are, adult, it can be turned dark. The energy of the universe, the energy of God has been turned dark in many situations. And so there are those that are not uh, of the positive ilk of Jondi Council. 
but you do, don't hear much about their actions at this time. About several hundred years ago, there was much problem with that, but not at this time. Oh, I see. Uh, can you tell me about era culture, Aran culture? Aran culture is also, actually that's a very diverse planet. There are several different things that make it a, a diverse planet. First of all, there is a kingdom, but it only, it only rules over part of the planet. Other parts of the planet are ruled and have different uh, alien societies on it. The Aarons are true Pleiadians. Uh, Ken Jean, being the king of the planet, he does have some final words, but there are other sections of the planet run by other different uh, alien populations. But since it was uh, Pleiadian and Aaron uh, culture first, they have the last word on where people can uh, expand and build and things of that nature. So there are two other alien cultures on that planet um, that they don't really talk about too much. Uh, th but they are uh, sort of uh, hybrid cultures, if you will. They're not pure cultures, and that's why they chose ERA, is because ERA is very accepting of that kind of people. And so one is a hybrid Syrian Octorian council area. They have their own little council of Syrian and Octorians in one uh, one of the continents on ERA. And the other continent is a Pleiadian uh, Fendorian uh, uh, hybridization. It, that's a very unusual one because usually the Pleiadians from way back when were not ones that would hybridize. But they, are, they have since within the last several thousand years, started to hybridize and they've set up that culture with the Fendorians. The Fendorians, uh, how this came about was that there was a great deal of interaction between the Fendorians and the Pleiadians in a trade agreement with ERA about a thousand and a half years ago, Earth time. And they've spent a great deal of time on each other's worlds. And this, uh, this uh, great deal of time was probably two or 300 years. I'm not sure exactly the, the span. I think it was oh, closer to 300 years, uh, Earth time. And they became very familiar with one another and started to intermarry and uh, become a, a hybrid species. Now, they didn't even know at that time, if it could happen. Uh, the Fendorians are very different th than the Pleiadians, but they are still uh, physically similar in many ways. So it, it, it has come about that that is another section of the Aaron culture that is actually growing. The hybrid children from those families from long ago are Pleiadian uh, hybrids that are now uh, just part of the planet as a different part of the, their culture. Uh huh. How about um, Yayel culture? Yayel culture is intermixed within the Pleiadian cultures in different places. They are on era, but they are not as a featured culture there because they are in small pockets. They are on Maya, they are on Palana, they are on um, uh, Tara. They are not on our planets of X1, 2, and 3, but they are on, uh, uh, they, uh, they are not on the Nordic planets either. So they are interspersed in the Pleiades, because they're not originally from the Pleiades, 
but they some of them are now from the, the 80s because of how they have chosen to move uh, some pieces of their culture and uh, uh, their, their peoples away from the, the totalitarian dictatorship of the uh, original uh, Yigil cultures, which has become very, uh, very uh, uh, cruel in some ways. So, but the Yugil population has extended to uh, extended itself to many planets, and there's more than one complete Yugil planet. There's probably three or four. Um, so, the original uh, Yugil planet is is very harsh and and uh, cruel, sort of. But the, the people don't see it that way. Of course, they are just loyal to their to their their world and the beliefs thereof. So, but others did not want to uh, bend to that rule, so they moved on. So, where is the original Yugil planet? Where is the Yugil, the original Yugil planet? Let's see. There are two that I can think of that have uh, that are very early. And one of them is from the Orion area, and the other one's from the Cassiopeian area. Uh huh. Are there like a star? What stars are these? Uh, they don't have name except they're for number names in your okay. world. Uh, they do not have a name uh, per se, but they they are called Triata and Zoranenda. Triata. Priyata and Zoranenda, or Zoranenda. Wow. Zoranenda? Zoranenda, yes. Zoranenda, Triyata, Zoranenda, nice. Um, tell me more about Nordics. You mentioned Nordic, Nordic planets in, in Pleiades. The Nordic planet has, uh, it's just called the Nordic planet. So it, it had other names throughout the history of your uh, worlds and their worlds, but they just now call it uh, the Nordic planet. So it is farther out, it's farther reaching uh, in space than uh, the ones in the, in the nearer Pleiades. This is farther back into the Pleiades. And the, their planet, has a uh, very bright sun. It's a large sun, and it is has a, a a very strong gravitational pull. They are also from a, a moderately sized planet, just slightly larger than the Earth, and so their beings are very tall, very beautiful according to Earth standards. Mostly blonde and red red headed mostly very beautiful and but there's a they have a very cruel side to them they have a very uh, uh sort of greedy side to them perhaps because they are so beautiful and people tend to worship them wherever they go they have that certain look and uh, attitude and energy of leadership they're tall they're uh six in the six foot three to five inch range, and some of them even taller. Even the females are very muscular by their, by even uh, your standards, they just grow that way. Their, uh, their DNA has been manipulated to, to uh, bear children that will grow into great strong people. And so, and beautiful people as well, according to your planet. Uh, when they come to your world, they are immediately, uh, when they came to your world, they were immediately uh, seen as beautiful, intelligent, uh, and embraced by your, the Germans. And that's where your Aryan race comes from, is that the Nords were trying to take over the planet at once or so, at least a small a group of them were 
a, a group of about 25 or 30. The number is uh, it changes every time I hear the story, but it was a small group, but they were very powerful and they had information and a ship that uh, the Germans were very, very interested in uh, making for themselves. But they were determinant in some of the th actions of that war. Now, I don't know all that whole story there, but I know that that's where Hitler and the people around him got the idea for the Aryan race, blonde hair, blue eyes, strong individuals. That's why they they embraced that because the the Aryans were actually a spitting image of uh, the Nords. Right. So I heard that Aryans, ancient Aryans on the planet Earth uh, were led by Arjuna from Indian uh, mythology. Is it right? Do you know? It's somewhat right, yes. Um, that is written in the Sumerian tablets, if you will look, I believe it is. And uh, there are several leaders that come from the stars uh, from that era. And he is, he is one of them. I see. It. All right. So what else um, can you tell about modern Nordic culture? How do, what, what, what do they do? I, what dimension are they? Who? Which one? The um, the Nords? The modern oh, yeah. Nordics, modern Nordics and Pleiades. What do they do? What they're uh, mostly uh, they are in uh, mostly they are in higher dimensions than you. There are some third dimensional Pleiadians. They are on uh, Terra. The name of the planet is Terra. Is white Pleiadians in the third dimension? Uh, there are some on Polana. Uh, which is uh, is uh, a combination of many different uh, dimensions, and they realized that, and they they set this planet up uh, especially to uh, cater to hybridization from many different dimensions and densities. So that is Polana, and so there's many human uh, hybrids there. So. That's third dimensional. They they bring them back to a between third and fourth dimensional uh -huh. uh, existence. So the uh, Nords are in fifth dimension. The mm -hmm. the uh, Mayans are in fourth dimension. The Arians are in fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in almost the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. How does it feel in, in almost fifth dimension? Ah, oh, it's wonderful. It is, it is a lighter feel. But you remember, we all have our ascension periods, just like you're having one now. It is, mm -hmm. uh, as you move into the next evolution, you, it's an ascension period. It, you will always have them. It, they will continue forever and ever. You will never reach God, but each one gets you closer to his density. Uh huh. So tell me more about the Tara culture of Tara. Tara is a white Pleiadian culture. They're in third dimension. They are uh, space bound at this point. They're very high. They get, they phased out? Space bound. Uh, they're in outer space now, but they have not been oh, in God. outer space for a long time. They have been, only been in outer space for perhaps 80 or 90 years. Mm -hmm. And so they are above your uh, space program, but not very far above it. Oh. So, so they're they are not that technological good. yet? They're not that technological? They're not what? They're not very technological though. Not, they're more technological than your people, but not as technological as we are or any of the other planets in the Pleiadian system that I would talk about. Uh -huh. I'm only talking about ones that are space capable and are part of the galactic system. I see. So how because different are the... Other, there may be other civilizations, but they're in lower 
they are in lower intellectual development and are not part of the galactic government at this point. But I the see. white Pleiadians on Tara are. I see. So how different are the white Pleiadians from uh, Nordics? They're di they don't look the same at all. The, the oh, Nordics see. look more like humans. The white Pleiadians look more like, um, it's almost, it's not reptilian exactly, but it, it's more of a reptilian look. They're silvery white. They can be silvery uh, green. They can be silvery blue, but mostly they're very light in color. And mm -hmm. the Mayans have a, a light silvery color as well, but they're far more advanced. But they have a blue color more. Now, with the reflection of their planet, the way they are seen, they look more blue. But mm -hmm. um, the ones on Tara are silvery white. They are very uh, advancing very quickly in their oh, nice. space mm -hmm. program. They are, they, are, they are not actually humanoid. They're more They're not. closely related to like a gecko or a, a reptilian sort, but not I see. like the reptilian dinosaur looking one. I see. So tell me about the culture. The culture is very interesting, a very different kind of culture than you might think. It's uh, based on uh, many different belief systems, about where they came from and how they evolved. And they, they are, they're major, uh, major uh, religions are from outside their world as well because they were visited by many species during their early times. And so the Nords are actually like gods to them. The Nords uh -huh. visited there long, long ago, many of their statutes and tributes are looking like Nord, Nord people, but they are, no, they are considered gods to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is that they have a very kind and gentle attitude and a very, actually they're not very, they're not talkative, they're not telepathic, but they're not talkative. They are very quiet uh, a species. They only speak when they have to. It is something inbred within them. Uh, their food choices are very different than any other place as well. They're more insect oriented, more uh, uh, crustacean oriented. Those kinds of things are ma their main diet. They have quite a bit of water on their planet. So it's, it's like earth in the sense that there's a lot of water and they're very uh they're very good hunters but they're evolving away from that of course but there's still a, a, a section of their civilization that hunt and enjoy that very much and uh there's a part of their civilization that's becoming very advanced uh with their space program very advanced with their ways of dealing with uh, exopolitics. They're becoming actually very adept, very quickly. They're good listeners and they don't talk a lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, my time is over, but it's all very interesting. I, I, I think we should continue next time. Very well. Much Thank you very you. much. It was, it was good to see you. Yeah, nice to see. It was uh, a very interesting story. I learned a lot and it is, making a lot of sense. You're welcome. Have a good day. Good Bye -bye. day. Bye. Hello. Hey, Jim, welcome back. How are you doing?